had questions on content marketing, social media, growing audiences and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've been like more active on Twitter and stuff. One, I noticed uh, around 2020, everyone started getting on Twitter just because they had nothing to do and they were at home. Oh yeah, that makes perfect it, sense. I felt like it was like a different platform. It's like something changed. Uh, David Perel, who was interviewed before, and he's really big on Twitter. He mentioned something interesting that in 2018, 2019, Twitter changed from like this uh, chronological feed to an algorithmic feed. Um, I wasn't paying too much attention, so I didn't follow that. But all of a sudden you can go from just like your network of friends to the feed would show you to the whole world potentially. Mm -hmm. And that's when things started changing on Twitter and more, pe more people got on it. And so I started doing that. And what I noticed was a lot of company, the people that are trying to get investors, they don't want your money anymore because of, of exactly what you said. Money's so easy. You could raise money anywhere right now. What they want is your audience. So uh, actually this is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's public. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, like Copy AI, when, that was, uh, when I put some money in this one company, this writing company, um, they were also like, well, we kind of don't really need your money. We, we, want, we, want the, we want you and we also want your audience, right? Because that's like kind of a, a clone audience. And what they were also doing is taking small checks from these poor TikTokers and they were like teenagers, but they were talking about productivity software and they were actually selling copies of the software. And so they're like, we don't need like Sequoia. I don't know if that's an example, but like we don't need like these big investors. We can just take smaller ones with actual audiences that actually move product. And so I thought that was interesting. So that's kind of where content marketing comes in. I'm sure now that you're like growing pretty big on social media, you must get more deal inflow or people reaching out being like, hey, I saw you on this podcast. Can I have a business? I have Bob's Burgers business. Can you come in? Does oh, yeah. that happen like a lot more now at All scale? The time. I mean, I think that was one of the, so the first reason I got online is because I was probably bored and I wasn't traveling yeah. anymore. <laughs> and then the second reason I got online was because it's very annoying to go chase deal flow. Like anything, it's annoying to chase clients. It's annoying to chase chase, I don't know, employees, whatever it is. Mm. And I wanted them to come to me instead of me having to chase them. So I was like, how would mm. we do that? Oh, okay. I seem cool on the internet for whoever my target audience is. And then they might come to me and I don't have to go after them. That was my thesis. And so I started doing that. And then I started getting a ton of deal flow. Like one of the deals that I'm invested in is fold laundry here. It's like a wash and fold. So if you don't want to fold and do your own laundry, they'll like come to your apartment or building or whatever, and they'll go uh, clean it for you. And I invested in that business because I put out there a pretty big tweet thread about laundromats. Mm. And they were like, how about the fact that most laundromats only have a 30% utilization, like the machines only run 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. What if we could take it to 70%? I was like, cool. How would you do that? And they're like, we add a wash and fold to it. And so, and then what if we buy a software system to lay on top of it? And I was like, that's kind of cool. So I went and met with the guys and they, same thing. They like didn't really need the money. And so I said, well, I'm going to make you give me the money because I want a big chunk of the company, but mm. also, uh, Let's structure a deal and we'll share with the audience. So I think it goes back to Naval. Wasn't Naval the one? Yeah. Who talked about the four types of leverage, mm -hmm. you know? And and I think this fourth type of leverage, which is audience, and the other four were capital, labor, code. yeah, labor, capital, code, and then audience. Mm -hmm. And this fourth one is maybe one mm -hmm. of the most powerful I've ever seen uh, because it's permissionless. Uh, you don't have to code or anything like that. It's, exactly. It's pretty awesome. It, it's kind of funny, like the people that will reach out to you on Twitter just because you post stuff. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you think. I, I actually, I was actually talking to uh, one of my head writer guys and I was like, I wonder if there's a way to make a living just fucking around on Twitter. <laughs> Cause I, I kind of do a lot of that already. And I was going to say, isn't it, that what we do? It is kind of what we do already. I was just like, <laughs> I'm not far off, but I was just like, I wonder if that's like an actual thing. I think it kind of is. Yeah. So anyways, well, I guess we'll talk about newsletters in a second and, and how fucking around on Twitter is actually like right up that alley. Um, so what are some key ways you've actually grown your own audience um, yeah. on social media platform? And we'll go through the, the different ones, but what are some key ways you've grown? Or did you try to grow or just naturally grow? What happened? No, I think people will tell you they just naturally grow or full of shit. I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm always <laughs> like, there's no way. Nobody just like posted one thing, that was it, and they continue to grow. Like you have to work at it. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, for me... First, I just started posting stuff out to friends, but then there were a couple things that gave me a little bit of major boost. Actually, another one of our mutual friends now, Sam, I was posting in his Facebook group mm -hmm. and I, I like to draft off the cultural conversation. So, you know, say that, um, yeah, I don't know, people always seem to be interested in cash flow and making money, which is one of the things we talk about at Contrarian Thinking and weird ways to do that. Um, and so I would put together little value add posts in his Facebook group that were basically like, 
here's this business. It's called glamping and you can buy a piece of land for $10,000 near a national park and then put campsites on it for $0 and you can make $1,500 a month. And here's this woman, Kate, who did it. Here's exactly how she did it. If you guys think that's interesting, I could always drop the link to the article in it. And so um, I think drafting off the cultural conversation and stealing other people's audiences was basically what worked well for me at first. Hmm. But I did it in a way that I think, you could ask him, was enough value where people weren't like, ew. No, I saw saw you in the group. I'm part of that group. Yeah. Yeah. So that actually gave me like huge lift. And I did that in a few different groups, like Bigger Pockets, Sam's group. Um, And I'm like pretty lazy. I think we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking for how could I do this with the least amount of effort to the highest ROI on my time. Mm. And I don't always get there, but I'm trying to Mm. get there. And so I think those Facebook groups are a great way to do it. Huh. Interesting. So, okay. So you actually took some effort to actually try to do it. Did you, did you make a goal of like, I'm going to try to grow or was it just kind of like, uh, yeah, for sure. like, I'm, I'm seeing the benefit from this. I'll keep doing it. No, I'm very competitive. I wanted to hit 10,000 subscribers in 30 days oh. once I realized that it was a thing. So I wrote a blog post on this. It's on country and thinking you can see it. And then I documented every single day. What did I do? And so it basically was like day one, get a website, you know, day two, tell mom to send it to her PTA friends, like, you know, <laughs> day three. And and I did, I tried every sort of ridiculous thing I could think of. Um, and then I would note, okay, well, how many subscribers came from that? 50 subscribers, 100 subscribers. Um, I think a couple of things that worked well is I, I, like, I think people always send me their, you were just at a two-year-old's birthday party this week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't ever want to go to a two-year-old's birthday party until I have a two-year-old. Like, no interest whatsoever. All my girlfriends know. They, like, don't invite Cody to the baby shower because she's not coming. I'll send a gift. And uh, and so if they're going to send me their two-year-old baby party invite, I'm sure it was lovely, whoever it was. But, um, <laughs> but I'm going to send them a notification that I'm building a business baby. So I basically, like, sent it out to all my friends, and they could opt in. But everybody that I have ever conversated on, In any point in my life, I basically sent it to them and said, like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Here's why. Here's how I'd like you to be involved. Would you be interested in coming along for the ride? And, uh, you know, and if I've ever sent you a baby, you better get on this list. Oh, my God. Worst party guest ever. (laughs) Like, can you come to my two-year-old baby? How about you subscribe to my newsletter? That's that's fair. Okay, so let's let's talk about social media platforms. Where are you seeing the action? Uh, So, okay, so first of all, so I did some stalking. So Instagram, you have something like 50K followers. Twitter, 81K Ironically, TikTok, exactly the same number, 81K. LinkedIn, 21K. I don't know. Like with Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook. I, I guess I left that out. I forgot about that one. I don't even know what we have on there, but yeah. Yeah. Open. Where are you seeing action? Is it all of the above? Is it one that you really care? Like if you have to kill all of them, but keep one? Yeah. Is there... Well, actually, Noah told me in the beginning when I was looking at them, he's like, pick one platform, do it only. And I was like, great idea. No. Um, Yeah. uh, (laughs) One of them all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the reason I did that is because I was was like, I don't know which one I'm good at. I don't really, I wasn't very social media-y prior. Like, you know, like everybody else, I'd post whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Um, And so I think it's actually important to have multiple platforms because you don't want to get kicked off one or, you know, have something happen with one. So Mm. I would actually say, don't do just do one. That said, Twitter by far. So actually the numbers are this. Twitter brings in the most newsletter subscribers of anything out there. And Mm. I think Twitter also brings the highest sophistication level, which is weird for me to think about in newsletter subscribers. But that is how by far I've connected with most of the interesting humans is like Twitter. Mm. The second biggest one for us is TikTok of all Mm. of them. And I just have been on TikTok for maybe 60, 75 days and tiktok is a viral machine like when it hits it's just so powerful the conversion rate from the people who click on my newsletter link at tiktok to actually subscribe is 42 percent Hmm. How crazy is that? Twitter, it's like 2.5, 3%. So we're probably not optimized there. And then Instagram, I think, is the best for conversions. So right now we have like a paid newsletter and we have a community. Um, and those are really the only things I offer on the internet. Um, but uh, but Instagram actually allows you to build the best relationship, I think, with the user and actually convert them because of the DM ability in there. So you can actually have people that communicate like, what are you looking for? What are you trying to do inside of your DMs? We're experimenting now with hiring somebody that's uh, that's all they do. Mm. And so that's how I see those three. LinkedIn is just kind of like we post there, yeah. uh, but I don't really have a strategy for it. Uh, but if I had to grow really fast on something, 
it would be TikTok because it's by far the easiest right now. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's in that growth phase. That exactly like all, right. Yeah. Like Twitter was in a growth phase. YouTube was in a growth phase and then it kind of falls out. Oh, they get too crowded and then, they, you know, they stop showing as much. All that exactly. Stuff. Interesting. TikTok. Huh. Yeah. And it's the least production. So like TikTok actually devalues highly produced content, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So like, you know, YouTube, you actually need pretty well edited videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for TikTok, if you're like, hey, what's up? Dance to this music, point around a little bit, could go massively viral. And it took you two seconds to film on here. Hmm. Um, and so I, I think it's now, I think that I heard somebody told me that the average YouTube subscriber is worth 25 TikTok subscribers. Mm -hmm. So like the value of them is quite a bit lower. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a bud who makes $6 million a year on TikTok on his Discord channel and he's 24 years old. Wow. And I was like, I'm doing it wrong, man. Wow. I know. Yeah, there's going to be all these like, uh, oh, this TikTok. Guy. You, you used to hear about like, YouTube stars. Now it's all TikTok. I think that's right. It's funny how that, that tide changes. I think that's right. 